130 nations agree to support U.S. proposal for global minimum tax on corporations. Here's a summary of the article. Washington. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen announced Thursday that a group of 130 nations has agreed to a global minimum tax on corporations. If widely enacted, the GMT would effectively end the practice of global corporations seeking out low-tax jurisdictions like Ireland and the British Virgin Islands to move their headquarters to, even though their customers, operations and executives are located elsewhere. For decades, the United States has participated in a self-defeating international tax competition, lowering our corporate tax rates only to watch other nations lower theirs in response. The result was a global race to the bottom. Who could lower their corporate rate further and faster? No nation has won this race, said Yellen in a statement on the accord. Today's agreement by 130 countries representing more than 90% of global GDP is a clear sign. The race to the bottom is one step closer to coming to an end, said Yellen. Yellen also noted in her statement Thursday that the GMT agreement represents a key part of what President Joe Biden has called a foreign policy for the middle class. The strategy, devised in part by Biden's national security adviser Jake Sullivan, emphasizes how foreign policy and domestic policy can be integrated into a new middle ground between the traditional conservative and liberal approaches to global affairs. Foreign policy for the middle class aims to ensure that globalization, trade, human rights and military might are all harnessed for the benefit of working Americans, not solely for billionaires and multinational corporations but not for abstract ideological reasons either. This post received a score of 91,000, with an up-vote ratio of 86%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. As long as it actually includes financial institutions too. They are exempt from what I've seen but I could be wrong. It means big companies will incorporate their profits into a banking-type financial institution, Facebook Financial for example, and again, the only ones really paying the taxes will be small businesses and people. This isn't something that would happen. Financial institutions, particularly banks, carry a whole lot of regulation and oversight that companies like Facebook would never submit themselves to, particularly when it comes to depositors' money in the post-2008 world. Banks are required to be separately capitalized in every jurisdiction where they operate, for example meaning they are already separately taxed in each jurisdiction. Okay, but my grocery store formed a banking firm called PC Financial. Oh sure, they certainly can, and they'll be regulated for it. Just like Lawblaw's bank, PC Financial, is in fact covered by existing Canadian financial regulation, the only country it operates in today. And they're appropriately capitalized, and pay taxes on all profits as a result of those rules. You can't just declare you're a financial firm and poof taxes and rules go away. Bob Loblaw's Loblog? Bob Loblaw la Lobs la Bomb. Bob Loblaw's Lobbed la Bomb Bombs Bob Loblaw la's Lobbyist. That leaves 60 plus who aren't on board. Those on board represent 90% of global GDP and include China and India, which were both hesitant earlier. China and India don't really matter. I'd be more concerned with what the tax havens will do. London is pushing for an exemption despite being INE of the bigger promoters of the policy. City of London, London and Call are two separate entities. Call still runs on a guild system. Never heard this before. How does a guild system work in the 21st century? Like this, YouTube. That's hilariously complicated and gatekeepy. Absolutely no way to see that being abused. Greater than being abused, that's the point. Greater than no way to see also the point. P. Interestingly, the tax haven Cayman Islands have signed on. European tax haven country Ireland has not. I'd be curious to know how that happened. Dot. Opening square bracket. Also PSA since the article seems to have not gone through any sort of quality control. Here is the actual timeline of this proposal. I'm not sure how a Franco-German proposal became a U.S. proposal by the U.S. merely being one of 130 plus countries who agreed to it. But hey, maybe the journalist was on drugs when they wrote that article. Yay, my international tax law background comes in handy. So Pillar 2 by the OECD actually included four somewhat distinct international tax reform mechanism, of which a minimum tax was one. 
The alternatives, such as digital services taxes, could be implemented unilaterally, and have been in France, the UK, and soon in Canada. Of the four proposals the min tax is the only one that the United States could reasonably be expected to promote, because the alternative formats in one way or another would essentially transfer taxation capacity to consumer jurisdictions, especially for digital giants, which would eat into the United States taxes and disproportionately impact U.S. businesses such as Apple and Google. Pushed for four options, the U.S. picked the one that doesn't hurt them as much, and that's why it's called the U.S. Initiative. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.